Okay, in our video series of ECG interpretation made easy by six step method, in this video we are going to talk about a step four of ECG interpretation, the QRS assessment. In QRS assessment, we have three main steps, R wave progression assessment, excess deviation and bundle branch block. In this video, we are going to talk about excess deviation in QRS assessment. Now coming to excess deviation. Whenever a normal current flows through the heart, it flows from SA node to AV node and from AV node to bundle of phase 2 per Kanji fibers. The flow of this current in heart is in the direction of left lateral downward direction. Down, left and to the front of the body is the normal flow of electrical current in the heart. Now, whenever there is any damage to the myocardium, any damage to the any part of heart, the electrical flow gets disturbed due to myocardial ischemia, hypoxia, hypertrophies. These things disturb the normal flow of this current and it will result in deviation of this main vector of current flow that is called as excess deviation. This excess deviation can occur due to myocardial infarction, due to hypertrophies, due to bundle branch blocks, due to fascicular blocks. For example, if there is any ischemia or myocardial tissue is dead over here on the right side, now this right side of the heart is not contributing electrical current. So, this excess will deviate towards the left side. If there is myocardial ischemia on the left side, so this myocardial tissue will not contribute to this electrical vector and this vector will deviate to the right side. That is called as excess deviation. Basically, it indicates that myocardial tissue is damaged. Same goes for hypertrophies and bundle branch blocks. Now, this is a picture showing the normal flow of current. This is a vector show in the left lateral and downward direction. That is the normal flow of electrical current in the heart. So, we have this picture of hexaxial plane. In this hexaxial plane, we divide it into the four quadrants. If it is present between 0 to plus 90 degrees, if the vector of the heart of the current flow is present in this quadrant, it is normal. If it is present over here, that shows right excess deviation. It means that either there is myocardial ischemia on the left side of the heart or there is hypertrophy of the heart tissue on the right side. Therefore, the excess has deviated towards the right side. And now, what if this vector deviates in this quadrant? If it is present from 0 to minus 90 degrees, that is called as a left excess deviation. And remember, left axis deviation is divided into two, pathologic left axis deviation and physiologic left axis deviation. Sometimes the deviation from 0 to 30 degrees is called as a physiologic deviation because sometimes in athletes there is left myocardial heart tissue becomes hypertrophied and that is a normal hypertrophy of the left side that can result in physiologic deviation from 0 to minus 30 degrees and that left axis deviation is considered physiologic that is considered normal because that is a normal hypertrophy in athletes that results in deviation of excess from 0 to 30 degrees. So, minus 1 to minus 30 degrees is a physiologic left axis deviation. But if this axis deviates from more than minus 30 degrees, more than minus 30 to less than minus 90 degrees, that is a pathologic left axis deviation because a normal hypertrophy, a, a hypertrophy in the athletes, a normal hypertrophy cannot cause this much deviation. If there is more than minus 30 degree deviation, if the vector is present over here, this shows that the there is pathological problem pathology present in the uh, heart that is causing left axis deviation that is pathologic and what if this vector totally deviates into an opposite quadrant this opposite quadrant if this vector deviates into the opposite quadrant that is called as an indeterminate excess deviation it is rare to have the vector over here it's more common to find vector in the right side or the left side and it is less common to find the vector in the opposite direction that is called as an indeterminate excess deviation or it is also called as a right extreme right excess deviation or it is also called as extreme right excess deviation and it is rare to find extreme right excess deviation you can see these type of deviations when the patient has developed severe ventricular tachycardias but more common is right and left excess deviation. Now, how do you determine excess deviation? In an ECG, when you have lead 1, lead 1 is present over here, 
lead avf is present over here and the main vector of the current flow is in this direction this is the main vector of current flow now if you see whenever the current flows toward a lead there is positive deflection on ecg so the vector is flowing towards lead 1 and lead avf on this side so 1 and avf are showing positive r wave there is positive deflection there is positive deflection in one and avr now what if this vector deviates towards this side if it deviates towards this side this avf will be lying in the opposite direction and the current will be flowing like this what if this axis deviates to this side to left side the current will be flowing opposite to the avf it will be flowing away from the AVF and then there will be a negative deviation. So, to look at the excess deviation, we have two important leads, lead 1 and lead AVF. Now, normally, if you look at lead 1 and lead AVF, they both have positive deflection because lead 1 is present over here, lead AVF is present over here and vector is flowing like this. So, both will show positive deviation positive r wave lead one will show positive r wave lead avf will show positive r wave and if both qrs are pointing upwards it is a normal axis now what if this axis this vector deviates toward this side if this vector deviates towards this side then this vector will be flowing away from lead one and the lead one will show negative deflection if this vector if this vector flows over here and if this vector is deviated toward the right side then this vector will be flowing in the opposite direction of lead 1 and the lead 1 will show negative deflection and lead avf will show positive deflection because it will be in the direction of current flow so if the lead 1 is showing negative deflection and lead avf is showing positive deflection that is called as a right axis deviation so that occurs in right axis deviation lead 1 is negative lead avf is positive and lead 1 is present on the top of ecg lead avf is present below so what you will see is that you will see a pattern like this that lead 1 is deviated downward lead avf is pointed upward and they are pointing towards each other the qrs's are pointing towards each other they are reaching out for each other if the right r wave of avf and r wave of lead 1 reach out for each other that is a right axis deviation so the mnemonic to remember axis deviation is that right reaches the lead one qrs is downward lead avf qrs is upward and they will reach out for each other right reaches now if this vector if this vector deviates from this quadrant and it goes into this quadrant now this vector is lying opposite this vector this current is flowing in opposite direction to lead avf and lead avf will show negative deflection and lead one will show positive deflection because the vector is over here lead avf will show negative deflection lead one will show positive deflection since it is in present near to the current flow and lead avf is present opposite to the current flow so if the avf is negatively deflected and lead one is positively deflected that is left axis deviation and if you look at the ecg we'll solve the ecgs now in ecg lead one is present on the top lead avf is present below and lead one qrs complex is pointing upward lead avf qrs complex is pointing downward so the qrs are leaving each other the qrs complexes are leaving each other if they are both pointing away from each other that is left axis deviation you can remember the simple mnemonic left leaves the left axis deviation the qrs complexes of one and avf leave and right reaches normal is upward that is a simple way to remember the axis deviations now if this vector deviates totally into the opposite direction in this indeterminate quadrant now what you will see is that the current is flowing opposite to lead one and lead avf the current is flowing opposite to the both leads and both leads lead one and avf will show negative deflection because the current is flowing in this direction and these leads are present over here and these leads will show negative deflection negative deflection if both leads are pointed downwards then it is an indeterminate axis and it is rare to find both leads pointing downwards 
Now let's solve some ECGs. If you look at lead 1, lead 1 is pointing upward. If you look at lead AVF, AVF is also pointing upward. So both are pointing upward. It is a normal axis. Now pause the video and solve this ECG yourself. Pause this and find out the axis that whether it is normal, it is left axis or it is right axis deviation or it is indeterminate. Now coming to the answer, if you look at lead 1, lead 1 the R wave is negatively deflected. The R wave is downward and let's look at the AVF. AVF is positively deflected. So the lead 1 is downwards, lead AVF is pointing upward and they are reaching out for each other right reaches so this is a right axis deviation it cannot be more simple than this this is a right axis deviation pause the video look at the ecg and find out that where is the axis deviation in this now coming to the answer let's look at the lead one lead one is pointing upward positively deflected lead avf is negatively deflected the lead one is pointing upwards, the lead AVF is pointing downwards. So they are leaving each other. Left leaves. So this is the left axis deviation. Both leads are opposite. They are leaving each other. Now pause the video. Solve this ECG yourself. Find out the axis in this. Where is the axis? Whether it is normal, it is right axis or left axis deviation. Now coming to the answer, if you look at lead 1, lead 1 is predominantly positively deflected. So it is a positive deflection, deflection upward. If you look at lead AVF, lead AVF is predominantly deflecting downwards. So the prom prominent deflection is downward. There is somewhat upward deflection, but the predominant part is downward. So we'll say that the lead AVF is pointing downward and lead 1 is pointing upward and they are leaving each other. The left leaves. This is a left axis deviation. Now coming to the causes of left axis deviation. Remember, as I said, myocardial infarction, hypertrophies, bundle branch blocks, all these things cause excess deviation it left excess deviation can be normal in older and obese people that physiologic deviation that i talked about from 1 to 30 degrees that can be a normal physiologic deviation mechanical shift in pregnancy you now since the heart is hanging down in the chest cavity like this now when there is pregnancy and uterus starts to swell up that heart start, starts to become like this so there can be a left excess deviation due to the uterus pushing the heart upward emphysema left ventricular hypertrophy in the left ventricular hypertrophy the left ventricle gets big and it attracts all the currents toward it it is producing more currents therefore the vec axis deviates towards the left side left anterior fascicular block inferior wall mi left bundle branch block ventricular tachycardia so these are all the causes of left axis deviation now coming to right excess deviation, anything that causes the hypertrophy of right heart will cause deviation of the excess toward the right side. Emphysema results in damage of the right side of the heart and there is hypertrophy because of the increased hypertension present in the pulmonary vessels, increased pumping of the heart to the right side causes hypertrophy and that the muscles get big on the right side and they produce more currents therefore the, 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 there is deviation toward the right side. Right ventricular hypertrophy COPD has the same mechanism, left posterior fascicular block right bundle branch block now what happens in the bundle branch blocks is that if there is a right bundle branch block if the current is not flowing toward the right side so the current quickly goes to the left side left side gets depolarized left side has the current then what happens is that since the right side is not receiving current this uh, must this the muscle of the left ventricle starts sending currents to the right side and the current starts flowing in this direction rather than flowing in the normal flow it starts flowing in this direction when the current flows in the rightward direction there is a right excess deviation we'll talk about hypertrophies and excess deviation in detail in the videos on hypertrophy ventricular tachycardia indeterminate excess deviation is less common it can be seen in ventricular tachycardia and biofascicular blocks now before going into the summary, if you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my previous video on R-wave progression and check out my next video on hypertrophies. 
we talked about six step method in step four we have the qrs assessment qrs assessment we talked about excess deviation in this video we talked about what is excess deviation the normal excess what changes the excess a right excess deviation left excess deviation the normal physiological deviation from zero to 30 degrees and then we talked about indeterminate excess deviation extreme right excess deviation if they are reaching towards each other that is right reaches right excess deviation if they are leaving each other that is a left excess deviation if both are downwards it is indeterminate and if both are upwards that is a normal excess then we practiced some ecgs right excess deviation left excess deviation left excess deviation causes right axis deviation causes causes of indeterminate axis deviation if you liked my video please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on ecg interpretation made easy the link of those videos is given in the description below thank you very much